Good evening, everybody. I'm Teresa Perrin, and tonight I want to discuss Hellbiz with you and the new filings that came out today. Just so you know, this is not new news. This was expected because there was a filing back in October that announced that we received secured funding, and this is part of it and part of the agreement. So nothing new here, but I'm going to go over it by request. Let's get started. And please remember that nothing I say is financial advice. Always do your own DD. If you could smash that like button for me, I would greatly appreciate it. All right, guys, back in October, Hellbiz announced that they had an agreement with um, Yorkville. It says Hellbiz enters into an equity line of credit facility of up to $13.9 million with Yorkville Advisors. Now, part of that agreement was they gave them money and as a result, they could either repay them through shares or they could repay them with the amount due. Now, what we see today, oops, sorry, wrong spot, is two shelf, well, it looks like a shelf offer, offering, but it's really um, the shares that they're giving Yorkville as a result of this agreement. And it says, pursuant to this prospective supplement, the accompanying prospectus and the accompanying base prospectus, we are offering 8 million shares of our class A common stock to YA2PN, a Cayman Island exempt limited partnership, aka Yorkville the company that they have this agreement with at a price of approximately 0 0.1199 per share pursuant to our previously announced standby equity purchase agreement with Yorkville dated October 31st, 2022. Again, guys, this is nothing new. This was expected. And there's a second one. One of these was for 8 million shares. The second one was for 6 million shares. So a total of 14 million shares. And that's coming out of that 13900000 that Yorkville had agreed to pay um, up to that amount um, to Hellbiz. And also, just so you know, um, the total purchase price of the shares, and this is for the $8 million, was $959,200. And Yorkville waived the requirement under the SEPA that we use the proceeds from the issuance of the shares of this offering to repay a portion of the principal amount owed to Yorkville pursuant to outstanding debentures issued to Yorkville. We expect to issue the shares to Yorkville on or about January 3rd and January 5th, 2023. Now there is a second agreement for 6 million shares which accounted for $664,800. And again, um, Yorkville waived them to require payment of the funds that they borrowed um, from them. So that means that they are not required to pay them at that time from my, at this time, from my understanding, um, they are getting shares and they are not making them use the proceeds towards that balance. So apparently if you continue to read through this guys, and I apologize, but I have my daughter's last night with me. So I am not going to do that tonight. I am going to spend time with her, but I am doing this as a courtesy per request, just to let you know that this was expected. You can continue to read this filing on your own, all the many pages of it, if you would like to, to get the details of what they want to do as far as the balance of the loan. Personally, I don't really care because we all know that this is a startup and they need funding and this is not new news. This was expected, right? So they are getting shares in exchange for money, which they are going to use for their expenses. And it's a total of 14 million shares that they are getting. And to be perfectly honest with you, I think that part of the reason the price has been held down is because this was looming since October, guys. So I'm kind of happy that this is happening. And I think that until they get out of this period of time, which is sometime in January that they can do this up until. And remember, they have $13 million. Um, $900 worth of shares they could do this with. So that 
obviously is dilution, right? Even though Yorkville states, and here it is, that they do not plan to sell these shares. Um, let me just expand this so you can see it better. Though we have been advised by Yorkville and Yorkville represents in the SEPA that Yorkville is purchasing the shares for its own accord for investment purposes in which it takes investment risk, including without limitation the risk of loss and without any view or intention to distribute such shares in violation. Um, oh, wait, hold on such shares in the SEC may take the position that Yorkville may be deemed an underwriter with the meaning of Section 2A and any profit of the sales of shares of our common stock by Yorkville and any discount commission or concessions received by Yorkville are deemed to be underwriting discounts and commissions under the Securities Act. So again, it states here, Yorkville's intention is to make this an investment. Although guys, like with anything else, there's nothing holding them back from selling them if they choose, but they have advised that this is an investment. And the same thing goes under the 8 million shares. I just don't feel the need to repeat it twice. You can look if you don't believe me. Um, and as you can see, um, the two separate ones here, guys, this one was for um, based on 0 0.1286 cents a share. And let me just see something here. I want to see if the distribution dates are going to be different on them. Give me one second. These 6 million shares, they already issued to them. Just so you know, it said we expect to issue these shares on or about December 27, 2022. So those 6 million shares have already been issued. It's only the 8 million now that are getting issued. That's what I just wanted to double check, okay? So it's 8 million shares right now that you may see um, take effect between January 3rd and January 5th. Actually, guys, it's after that. All of these shares have already been issued. So this is most likely why the price has been staying down low. And this is actually probably what drove it down low. Um, I apologize for not having the date in my head clearer, but all of these shares have already been issued. Um, as you can see, so this filing is just being done so that we know what happened. So that being said, that makes me have a whole new thought on that. Very, very bullish, unless another one we see filed, guys, because honestly, I believe 100% now that that's what held this price back. And as you can see in the after hours when these filings came out, unfortunately, people that don't read and don't know any better probably got scared, saw shares, and said, oh my God, there's an offering. Well, it's not really an offering, guys. This is old news and... Yes, it is unfortunately dilution, but this is dilution that is more of investment terms. So it's different the way it's handled. It's not like these are going um, into the public float. This is kind of like a private placement offering. Think of it that way. Um, so this tells me 100% that the price was staying down low due to this occurring. And remember, somebody always knows something. This Re reiterates my theory um, that I'm going to review with you tonight that we are going to move higher very soon. Now, that being said, um, our free float is at 81.19 million. And I'd have to go back and look to see whether this has taken that into account or not, or whether they even count that in the private, in the free float, or if they're considering Yorkville and just their shares outstanding count. The average volume has been 17.19 million and the volume 9.43 million today. So as you can see, it's, you know, a little more than half of the normal volume. And generally before a stock moves higher, there's an, a, a time of capitulation or accumulation, depending on what you want to call it. And that's a time when you see that the stock, you know, is kind of just hanging out around this 13 cent level, um, like it has been for, gosh, like a week, more or less now, maybe two. Um, and the volume's been very low, as we all have seen. And then when we break out, guys, and the volume comes back, which I expect 
Maybe we get some kind of news or an announcement happening soon. We will see a move higher. Now, another thing floating around is the rumor of delisting. Guys, we are not going to get delisted. I don't know how many million times I can say this. Obviously, if push comes to shove and there's no extension giving, then the bottom line would be a reverse split would be the worst thing that we would be looking at. And to be perfectly honest with you, it may actually help our position. And those of you that believe that a reverse split is always bad, I beg to differ. Obviously, I hope that we can naturally get up above a dollar without one. Because yes, it does affect psychologically the number of shares you own, but the price is still the same. And sometimes it can actually move the price higher. The most recent stock I can give you to take an example of would be GoCo. Take a look at that chart and what's happened after the reverse split. I believe we would see something very similar with Helbus as long as they made it a very um, high number that they did for a reverse split. Now, I just want to show you a couple more things. I think that this was the notice that I wanted to show you. This is the delisting failure to satisfy the continued listing rule. And again, guys, um, we are not going to be delisted. And you can go and look at Salvatore Paya's own Twitter. And he even says it's not even an option. If it was, guys, you think that I would be putting my money in this this stock. No, absolutely 100% not. I can assure you of that. All right, now, um, and I'm still as bullish as ever. Just an FYI, just because I don't talk about it every five seconds doesn't mean that I'm not bullish on it. And I, I think if you follow me, you know that I've been adding to my position. At any rate, the short interest is now down to only 1.75%. At least that is what is shown. I personally think it's higher based on what we're going to talk about in a minute. Um, there are still 3,700,000 shares available if they want to continue playing this short game. And the cost to borrow is approximately 29.54%. Now, uh, the short volume ratio, and this is why I do not believe it's as low as what they're stating the, sh the short interest is, because every single day in the dark pool, they've been shorting between 43.69 and 59.27% of all the shares. So, you do the math for yourself and you tell me what you think in the comments below. Do you think our short interest is really sitting at only 1.75%? Remember, that is only what firms are required to release that data, which is not most hedge funds. It would be um, something like a pension fund for teachers or something like that where they're required to disclose what they are doing. And failure to deliver do not come into play with this, guys. I honestly believe, and I have thought for a while since October, that this would affect the price. And which is why um, I've just used this time period to accumulate shares, guys, because I think that um, obviously perhaps it's even Yorkville who's been shorting. I don't know if it's in their agreement that they can't, but they could have partners with somebody else that's keeping the stock low because clearly they can get a lot more shares when the price is cheaper, right? So during that time frame, that was kind of an expectation, sadly, and this is what happens with funding. But now that we have the wheels acquisition, hopefully we can move things along and become profitable a lot faster as that is the goal. Now, I also want you to keep in mind, I have never seen a CEO purchased shares of a company as frequently as we have seen with Salvatore Paya. And forgive me if I'm saying his name wrong. I am horrible with names um, and I've never heard it said out loud. At any rate, I do believe that he clearly believes in this company. So I don't think he's doing things to purposely um, set this up to be to fail or anything else, guys. And I know there's like... I don't know. I saw some crazy things floating around the internet today that had to do with crypto and things like that. Guys, I have no idea what that is. I've never seen it. I don't even know if it's related. I don't know if it's short spreading FUD. I don't know if it's something totally different. Um, I, I'm sorry. I can't comment on it and I don't have time to research it right now because I have my daughter here and I have my ex-husband here. Um, so, I'm going to get back to them, but I just wanted to give you a quick update and I hope that you have a fabulous night. Again, this